Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm very pleased to be able to spend some time with you. I am here in uh, Houston, Texas, where we are in the middle of our very hot and steamy springtime. It feels to me much like it does in South India right now. So I think you up in the north are still experiencing some better spring weather. My name is Dr. Lorenzo Cohen, and I'm director of the Integrative Medicine Program in Houston, Texas at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. We are a standalone uh, hospital with an exclusive focus on cancer. As director of the Integrative Medicine Program, I help to oversee the clinical delivery, as well as very importantly, the research in this area of integrative medicine, where we're looking at factors such as lifestyle and prevention uh, for cancer patients, as well as um, trying to prevent cancer in the first place through lifestyle factors. We incorporate things like acupuncture, massage, music therapy, yoga, meditation, special diets, doing research as well as guiding patients on herbs and supplements, um, both from, from the Western world as well as uh, things that are coming from Eastern traditions, from Ayurvedic medicine, from traditional Chinese medicine um, and the like. Um, today, what I'm going to be doing is talking to you about um, what we can do to actually help each other and help our body be as strong and as resilient as possible as we undergo the stress of this current experience of, of a world pandemic. Um, much of what I'll be saying today as is said in the title of, of my talk, was going to focus around the immune system. Uh, but it, it is relevant, of course, beyond immune function. I'll be talking about, uh, in particular, aspects of lifestyle that my wife and I have put together in this book called Anti-Cancer Living, Transform Your Life and Health with the mix of six. The uh, version of this that's actually available in India is slightly different because it's the uh, British publication, um, but it's called Anti-Cancer Living, the Six Step Solution to Transform Your Health. So for whatever reason, the British publication didn't like the concept of the mix of six, but the key is that there's six uh, factors that we focus on here. And those factors are uh, social support, love and support, connection, stress, and of course, stress management, sleep, exercise, diet, and then exposure to environmental toxins. And what we'll do is go through each of these areas today and I'll, I'll describe uh, how they are so relevant and why now more than ever it is important for us to, to harness the power of the mix of six to be able to uh, maintain as healthy a body as possible to stay healthy during this uh, unique challenge that we are all experiencing right now. So what, what is quite unique about what we're all going through right now is that it's something that is happening to everybody, albeit to different degrees, uh, in every single country across the globe. This is a very unique uh, situation. We'll often have regional challenges that we're dealing with here in Houston. Uh, we have a lot of flooding and we have hurricanes, but of course that just affects us. And albeit there's millions of people 
who are experiencing the same thing. Uh, it's very different than what we're going through now. India, of course, has regional challenges that happen due to natural disasters and the like, uh, and perhaps challenges that happen to the whole country at one time. Uh, but that is, again, something that is relatively isolated. What is very unique about this experience that we're all going through now is that it's happening in a similar manner to everybody across the world. And I think um, except for the pandemic uh, that is um, feeling similar in, from what we know historically, the 1918 uh, flu pandemic, there has never been anything in the history of the world that has been this kind of a shared experience. Now, of course, there's pros and cons to the shared experience. The, the con, of course, is that this is quite a tragedy and, and the suffering and the lives lost and, and the trauma to so many people around the world is, is staggering and uh, horrendous. What it is also doing, however, is connecting us. Um, and in some sense, this is, is a very powerful force. So, you know, just to start on, on a kind of positive note, one thing we know from, um, from a, a vast amount of literature is that if we can, during times of trauma, focus on the positive, to some degree and to be able to find the positive in trauma that this can lead to healing and an increase in well-being and nobody has said it better than uh victor frankel who was the viennese uh psychiatrist who survived the uh auschwitz uh concentration camps where he wrote in his man's search for uh, meaning that trauma ceases to be trauma once it finds meaning. So to be able to, to look for the positive in this, to try and find meaning and purpose as we all go through this uh, world event will allow people and allow you to feel uh, somewhat better. I'm speaking, I believe, primarily to healthcare providers, and you know, all of you have have incredible meaning and purpose right now, and we value what you're doing in the field, putting your lives at risk to to help the rest of the world. Now, you know, the stress of what everyone ex is experiencing is uh, understandable and not something that can actually be easily avoided. Uh, however, what one needs to do is to try and manage our stress as best as possible. We can't avoid the challenges, the stressors that we're experiencing. But what we can do is try and incorporate things throughout the day to decrease the harms that that stress is going to have in our body. And it is critically important that we do that because, um, you know, we won't have time to go into every single biological process, but stress essentially has a negative uh, biological and physiological impact on every single process in our body. Most importantly, and what we're talking about today is the immune system. We know that stress decreases what's called cell-mediated immunity. Cell-mediated immunity is critically important for uh, helping to protect us against uh, viruses, for helping to protect us against rogue malignant cells in our body. It is critically important for mounting an immune response to an antigen that has entered our body, such as uh, the, the uh, SARS-CoV-2, uh, which is the virus that causes 
uh, the COVID-19 illness that millions in the world are currently experiencing and unfortunately dying of. So maintaining as strong an immune system as possible is more important now than ever. And there's actually some data to suggest that experiencing chronic stress will decrease your response to a vaccine, that the immune response, the seroconversion that takes place will be diminished if you are chronically stressed. And so, you know, as we move towards hopefully having a vaccine soon, this becomes even more important because we want to sero convert as easily and as fast as possible. So, you know, it is, it is critical that one starts to manage one's stress. And um, how does one do that? Well, there's a lot of different ways that we can engage in stress management. And I believe you've heard from a lot of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Nagendra, uh, Manjunath, as well as Dr. Nagarathna, who have spoken about yoga and the yogic tradition uh, that is so rich in India. And it is clear that there is really overwhelming data that a practice like yoga is uh, going to be extremely important for helping to manage stress. Now, yoga, of course, is, is more than just stretching. And I'm showing you the, the cover of this book because uh, this is my grandmother and how yoga came into my life at a very young age uh, through this wonderful woman, Vanda Scaravelli. And, and yoga has just always been part of my life. And it really is a, a quintessential mind-body practice where you're engaging your, your mind and calming down your thoughts, you're working with your breath, and you're working with your body to achieve, it ultimately, in the end, uh, trying to calm and quiet down the mind. There is overwhelming evidence, and a lot of it we've put together in this book called Principles of Practice of Yoga and Healthcare with uh, my colleagues Satbir Khalsa, Timothy McCall, and the wonderful Shirley Tellis, who works uh, with Swami Ramdev up in Haridwar. Um, and, and there's really just overwhelming evidence to suggest that yoga plays a role in helping to prevent and control multiple diseases and has an impact, again, on all bodily systems because it is uh, helping to, if we think of it just from a purely reductionistic biological perspective, help to shift us from uh, sympathetic neural system activation more into parasympathetic tone. By increasing parasympathetic tone, of course, we're decreasing the stress hormones of norepinephrine and epinephrine, the stress hormones that help us mobilize the fight or flight stress response that we're trying to dampen down. Now, acute stress can be very useful, but when it becomes unremitting and chronic, this is where we have an increase in risk of multiple diseases, including cancer, heart disease, uh, and to others, really these inflammatory diseases. So a, a practice like yoga, which incorporates meditation, diaphragmatic breathing, is just critically important. And as trite as it may seem, something like diaphragmatic breathing, where you're doing these deep belly, belly breaths, where you're extending the diaphragm down and on your exhalation, fully emptying your lungs and lifting the diaphragm up. This movement of the diaphragm up and down is actually stimulating the vagus. And by stimulating the vagus, which is innervated through the gut, this is increasing parasympathetic tone, which will lead to essentially the relaxation response is what we are seeking. What we know from some of the research in examining the brain is that practices like meditation 
actually have an impact not only on the function of the brain, but actually our neuroanatomy, decreasing in the size of the amygdala, the fight or flight center, increasing in the size of the hippocampus, which can be useful for memory and consolidation of memory. Um, and in a very interesting early research actually found that, um, found that the increase in uh, uh, there we go sorry uh, that the um, that the decrease in the the size of the amygdala and increase in left prefrontal in particular activation um, led to an increase in the speed at which somebody sero converted to a vaccine so again this becomes extremely important during this time to have as sensitive an immune system to these foreign antigens as possible uh, the, the the virus that causes covid19 to be able to sero convert and respond to that is critically important now why Managing your stress is so important is, is that it actually is the saboteur of all other good healthy intentions, the other areas of what we call the mix of six. So being chronically stressed will have a negative influence on our sleep and our sleep behavior. And we know that sleep is critically important for immune health and that uh, people who are sleep deprived, even just an hour a night, uh, will have lower levels of uh, cell mediated immunity. And again, this is something that, that's critically important to maintain. Um, we know that people who sleep six and a half hours or less a night uh, are more vulnerable to multiple non-communicable diseases. Again, many of which are influenced through inflammatory uh, processes. Um, so the next area is exercise in the mix of six and exercise is extremely healthy for again all biological functions and in particular the immune system a short bout of exercise makes us more resilient to challenges and boosts the uh, immune system when it comes to uh, diet, we really want to be following what, what we would call a, a plant-centered diet. Uh, many, of course, I know in India are vegetarians, um, and this is the ideal uh, diet to be following, not to necessarily the exclusion of eating animal products. Uh, if, if that is something that is important for your diet. But that really needs to be the minority of things that one is eating. So what does a plant-centered diet look like? It is essentially that you um, are eating whole foods from the plant world. And this is really an anti-inflammatory diet. Most importantly, you want to have a lot of uh, whole grains that are, are not uh, refined in nature. So I know that, that in India, uh, a very popular food staple is, of course, white rice. It would be better if people were eating brown rice because then you're getting healthy fiber, which helps to feed uh, the the bacteria that are in our gut, the microbiome, and there's a direct link between our microbiome and our immune system. So much so that we know that individuals who uh, have cancer and they have a healthy gut, they have a much better response to immunotherapies, meaning their immune system is 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 more readily uh, activated. Um, and, you know, probably the message that is, is the most important to uh, send people away with is, is a concept of synergy, a synergy 
between these different areas of the mix of six, including the, uh, the last one, which is the environmental toxins and exposures. And interestingly, there's, there's of course a lot of data showing that our environmental exposures, both what we put on and in our body in terms of pesticides and pollutants and all the different personal care products that can be riddled with endocrine disruptors, which modify our immune system, um, is that right now we're seeing the evidence that individuals who are living in cities and in countries with higher pollution have a higher vulnerability and susceptibility to COVID-19 and a higher mortality rate. Uh, so this isn't necessarily something that we can fix right now. Uh, and it's very hard at an individual level to have an influence on this, um, certainly in the moment, but something that we as a world much fo mu must focus on on the future to clean up our environment. So the last area that I want to just touch really brief, uh, briefly touch on um, has to do with synergy. And synergy is essentially this concept that the um, whole is more than the sum of the parts. And when we're talking about the sum of the parts here, we're talking about the mix of six. And most of the research in this area has really focused on issues uh, and, and research uh, reducing these different lifestyle factors and behaviors. So for example, just doing research on diet or just doing research on exercise, or in fact, most of the yoga research that has been done has looked at yoga as this reductionistic practice of asana, pranayama, and meditation, and perhaps other subtler aspects of yoga, but not looking at yoga as what we would view as a lifestyle, the yogic lifestyle, which includes um, our relationships, which includes what we choose to eat and not eat. And the synergy really comes to play here um, on improving our health and well-being is when we incorporate and focus on yoga as a lifestyle and looking at all aspects of the mix of six. And nowhere is this more apparent than if we actually look and delve deeply into even the nucleus of every single cell in our body and look at our telomeres. We know that chronic stress leads to something that's called telomere attrition, the shortening of the telomere. And I think everyone's familiar, telomeres are on the end of every chromosome in the body. And as we age, our telomeres get shorter, just a part of the aging process. As your telomeres get too short, this leads to what's called chromosomal instability, a risk factor for cancer. And this is why cancer historically, at least, has been a, uh, um, a disease of more advanced age and aging is a risk factor for cancer. It's because of the telomere attrition. So essentially, uh, chronic stress, which leads to telomere attrition, we're saying it speeds the aging process. And wonderful research done by Elizabeth Blackburn, Nobel Prize winner for her research in this area of telomere, uh, found that uh, along with psychologist uh, Alyssa uh, Eppel, that chronic stress leads to telomere attrition. But most importantly, and I'll show you this graphic because it's described uh, so well here, is that as the, uh, over the period of a year, we see telomere attrition and across the bottom is reflected the number of stressors. And if you are engaging, you can see there at the top line that regardless of the amount of stress, if you're engaging in healthy diet, healthy exercise, and healthy sleep, you had no telomere attrition across the course of that year, regardless of the number of stressors you were experiencing. But this bottom group here, uh, where you see that steep line downward, where the more stressors you're experiencing, the shorter your telomeres, 
Uh, those were individuals who didn't have a healthy diet, weren't engaging in regular physical activity, and weren't getting a good night's sleep. So it is critically important now more than ever that individuals are engaging as healthily as possible in the mix of six to maintain a strong and resilient immune system to allow us to stay healthy. And I wish all of you uh, a, a healthful evening, a healthful day, months, and year ahead as we as a world uh, continue in our quest to maintain our health and well-being during this worldwide challenge. Thank you for attending today and uh, please engage in the mix of six.